Ow. Yeah, there we go. The well-lit room. And the clicker. Still in there? No. An elevator? Sure, why not? Yeah, because that makes sense. You stop sanity. You're doing well. You hope Keep so. Going. It's hard to make sense of this place. It's a dream. This is a vast place. Home to forces and beings that are completely alien. The Dark Presence. Yes. I don't know what happened to it after your final encounter. I flipped a switch. Is there any way out of here? Sometimes transmissions can be sent between worlds. You've done this yourself. But to actually leave the dark place, I haven't found a way. Ding. Fries are done. Stucky's gas station. Not something I particularly wanted to see, but obviously I wasn't the one in the driver's seat. Ooh, a hunting rifle. Another memory made real. Blake would never make it. The insanity he was facing was already a part of it. In him. His own doing. He couldn't possibly win. He didn't even want to. At least the lighthouse was much closer now. I would have to make my way up there somehow. Well, it looks like I'm going toward the bridge, does it not? Uh, there's a light this way. Always head toward the light, guys. Wire. Bridge. Wire. Man on bridge trying to kill me. Ow! Man sneaking up behind me on bridge trying to kill me. Stop that. All right, I'm powering a generator. You know, I don't think this game begins to make any more sense in the end. It's just... Survive. Don't go insane. Can I turn this on? Can someone at least let me put on the helmet? Because, I mean, seriously, guys. The amount of sharp objects being thrown at my head is a little preposterous. Preposterous! Oh, hello, Zane. The part of you that is in control is in the cabin, dreaming and insane. I don't think I like that. Neither do I. You represent the part of Alan Wake that is capable of rational thought and planning, which is why I'm talking to you. If that part can regain control, then you have a chance of making it. But a part of you wants to give in. There's comfort in the oblivion of dreams. You represent the part that isn't ready to quit and die. 
Wait, are you telling me I'm not real? You're as real as anything else in this place. So there are two of me? Yes. And the one you called Mr. Scratch, he's me as well? No. Zane, are you playing some kind of game with me? I am not the author of your story. How can you say that when you wrote that page about me and the clicker? It wasn't one of my pages. You directed me to it. You had Weaver guard it. Yes, she was needed. And you needed the clicker. But I am not. What? I don't understand. Alan, you should keep going. Zane? Zane, come on! Well, that cleared things up. I mean, maybe? There's two of you. One of them is named Mr. Scratch, but Mr. Scratch is not the one that is insane and sniveling on the floor writing all this madness. Mr. Scratch is the one that my friends and family would know, is what you said at the end of the the original episodes. So Mr. Scratch is evil? Am I gonna have to fight him? Okay. Crumble I did. The bridge rose in the unnatural wind. It was heralding the enemy's arrival. Wait, what leave this place alive? Alright, let's try not crumbling the bridge below me. That sounds like a good idea. All right, maybe we should try crumbling the bridge below me. Oh. Gosh darn it. So, I have to find myself because I'm not real and regain my conscious thought. A moment. I can help you here. You can help, but I thought you couldn't write anything. I thought you couldn't do any of this. It's like learning to control your dreams. There's a connection. You were in my dream. Yes. I taught you. You fixed the foolish mistake I made with Barbara. And what mistake was that? Writing her? Trying to bring her back? If you have con no control over my story, then how is it that you are able to help me so? I don't... I agree with Alan, that doesn't make any sense. Unless I wrote you into existence to write to me for continuity and canonicity's sake. I think that's the right word. Canonical. Canonical sake. All right, screw you guys. So 
So is that why Zane is able to help me? I wrote in the figment of Zane. Or of how I pictured Zane, maybe? Maybe that's how Zane is anywhere near a part of this. I wrote him writing to me. Because that's what Wake was saying, is in order for the story to work, he had to, you know, write a happy ending. He had to make Wake it work. He had to create involvement. Lights. It was pointless. He would never reach it. His life would be snuffed out just as easily as the very thing he thought would save him. God, you're making life you real the difficult. Light gone. All I could do was keep going. Yeah, one of them's you. Come here so I can shove this in your mouth. Since we're being so frank here, Alan, and let me just reiterate how happy I am that you've had this breakthrough, I would like to summarize your condition. By all means. And please, just let me know if you think I'm being unfair. All right. Well, let's start with the obvious. The car crash. Untreated head trauma. All due respect to Doc Nelson, but he's hardly a neurosurgeon. I Neither are you. He has affected you more than you realize. Yeah, I, I have had bad headaches. Then there's your history of substance abuse, which, combined with your chronic insomnia, has resulted in hallucinations and extremely poor impulse control. That's a dangerous combination. What substance which abuse? Your wife has unfortunately had to suffer from far more than you. I know. I know she has. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that you are existing in a state of all-encompassing denial. Your vivid fantasy casts you as a heroic victim and allows you to skirt responsibility for your own actions. It allows you to solve your imaginary problems and dismiss the things that truly trouble you. In your self-serving delusions, your personal problems are assets that allow you to save Alice, perhaps even the world. Dr. Harmon, I... I think that's spot on. I can't argue with any of that. Well, I'm sure I'm stating the obvious. I don't want to labor the point, but, well, um... No, no. I understand. It's important that I face it. Precisely, Alan. You've put so much effort and imagination into this self-deception, but what good has it really done for you? You refused my offer of help, and here you are. Did being so obdurate really get you to a better place? No. No. And did it really help Alice? Was this really the best thing for your wife? Probably not. Probably not. Why don't we find out? You know, I've been talking with her. There's something she wanted you to hear. Oh, what? Hey. That sounds like fun. Um. All I ever wanted was to help you, Alan. I ate all the shit you handed out and tried to understand your pathetic, wealthy white male drama until my life consisted of managing your never-ending crisis. I hate you for your childish temper and the arrogance and self-indulgent pride that undermine all efforts to drag you out of the hole you insisted on digging for yourself. I hate you for leaving me in the dark with that insane monster bitch! All you had to do was act like a loving human being for once in your life and stay with me. Your dramatic exit hadn't been more important than making sure I was all right. She would never have taken me. I don't know where you went, but that's okay. I don't want to know. 
I don't think I'll ever be all right. The only thing that keeps me from killing myself is the hope that I'll never see you again. What? Ouch. I, I just can't argue with that. I think I should stay here before I ruin what life she has left. I think this is a breakthrough, Alan. I'm really very proud of you. I'm sorry, what? It was nonsense. I knew I had saved her. I'd succeeded in that, and that was all that mattered. What I heard in there wasn't the truth. It was just another toxic mirage. It cut deep, but that made me all the more determined to force myself to snap out of it. I didn't want to be that guy anymore. I had to make myself see the light. I'm... Uh... I'm just really glad that Alan's able to see through this. I'm glad that that's how this is written. Because, first and foremost, I don't think I could stand him actually believing it. I think that would just drive me nuts. Because, like, we as the player will be like, no, that's that's clearly fake. That's definitely not how this is going. Come on, Alan. And he'd be a sniveling mess. And I think it would drive us all bonkers. Also, I like how there's just a video game in here. Gosh darn it! Drop it! Another flare! Alright, where's this other guy? You can die. And you can die. Guys, I'm getting really low on ammo. Be nice to have more of it. Start it, no! Nope, 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 nope. Oh. Well done. You have come far, but there's still a little further to go. You must take full control of your own mind. Reject all of the fantasies you have constructed. Yeah, well, I think I can do that. A lot of the stuff I've seen here is personal and ugly as hell. I'll admit it hurts, but it's not fooling me. I know it's fake. Good. You are aware. The part of you bent on self-destruction is not. But you must be careful just because you know the lies for what they are. That doesn't make the danger any less real. I'll make it. I don't have any choice. Here. Oh, I another man is further, but this will help you on your way. Thank you. Thanks. I guess. Hey, let me tell you something, Alan. I know how your mind works. You screw up, then you start analyzing it, and before you know it, you start writing all these horror stories in your head. Don't you? Come on, I don't do that. <laughs> yes, you do. I know how it goes. You're a complete failure. I hate you, and I'll never forgive you for whatever it was that you did. Am I wrong? Oh, man. See? I know you. They kept Alan, coming. It's all in your head. There were too many of them. Hordes and hordes of them swarming over the landscape, eager to kill. They were coming for Wake, and this time they would get it with sheer numbers. After that happy memory. There's an old terror with mystery of Tom the poet and his muse. And I'm a 
magic language gave a light to the words the poet used. Now the muse she was his happiness, and he rhymed about her grace and told the stories of treasures deep beneath the blackened waves. 